If you're a fan of the Metro series, you probably already know what Metro Redux is. But just in case you're new to the series, Metro Redux is a newly released game that's essentially a re-release of the two Metro shooters created by the Ukraine-based game development company 4A Games. The two games are Metro 2033, which was first released in 2010, and Metro Last Light, which first launched in 2013. With the Redux versions, though, you'll not only get all of the DLC that was released for the original games, but the devs at 4A Games have gone back and remastered both of the games using the latest 4A engine. Now, 2033 Redux has a ton of great set dressing that really helps to give you the feel of a post-apocalyptic Moscow. Every CG artist knows that one of the ways to really help sell realism and avoid making everything look like it's CG is to add some dirt to your objects. <laughs> While you'd probably expect things to be a bit grungy after a nuclear holocaust, one of the things that really struck us right away was how overly grungy and dirty everything seemed to be. So it started to almost have a negative effect. So here's a great example. See the blood on the floor? Now I know, obviously, after any apocalypse, cleaning supplies aren't necessarily gonna be a big deal, right? But it still seems like even if there's no one trying to keep up this makeshift hospital, usually they try to keep hospitals pretty clean, even if they're makeshift. I would assume even in an apocalypse situation, you'd still want to keep things pretty clean. But even if that's the case, so there'd still really be no way that the blood stays as little droplets like that on a tile floor like we have here. So it almost just seems like, well, they just threw down a blood texture on the floor. So little details like this can really start to add up and take you out of the believability of the game. Now with Last Light Redux, the issue wasn't nearly as prevalent as in 2033 Redux. So in this shot, we're in our room in 2033. Notice how everything has a grungy feel. Even the desk itself just feels dirty. Now in this shot, we're in our room in Last Light Redux. There's still a grungy feel to it, but not nearly as in your face overdone like it was in 2033. Although, hey, you can see we've actually got the same guitar that we had in 2033. Apparently, in the Metro, everyone has the same classical guitar. Even this guy over here. Oh, and if you notice uh, the map on the wall in this shot, you see the flickering? It almost looks like a couple polys on top of each other that are causing that flickering. But you can't go into this particular room, so it wouldn't really make sense to have multiple polys on top of each other just for different textures on the wall. We actually did notice this uh, sort of flickering, even if you're not moving, happening in some different areas throughout the game. Now, we really did like how some elements are that are traditionally in a HUD were incorporated into the game itself in Metro. For example, notice how the unique design of this machine gun helps you see how many rounds you have left without the need for a UI or a HUD or anything like that. Perhaps the biggest technical issue we found with the game was in the animation. This was really true for both Redux games. One example of that is <laughs> in the way that apparently everyone sits down exactly the same way. You can see in this shot, and this shot, and this shot. And well, you get the idea. It's just reusing that exact same clip once again starts to take you out of it. Now there's some other areas where some of the character animations were really jerky. Watch as this guy gets up and walks away. Now, it's most noticeable if you look at his legs. You might think that it's frames dropping from this video that you're watching right now, but that's exactly how it looked while playing the game, like frames were dropping out. He'll stop and talk for a bit, and then walk away again. You can same, see that exact same issue with his walk cycle as he walks away. Now, another blatant animation issue could be found with how much penetration was caused by the animation. So in this shot, notice the hands of the guy on the right. The position he's in, his hands go right into the chest. Or in this shot, it's a lot more obvious that his hands are pe penetrating his own body. Of course, sometimes that penetrating geometry seems to be more of a positive thing, like in this shot, where characters are eating some sort of whatever that is. Although, if you look at this shot, notice the flickering shadows. Like, if you look closely around the character's hand on the table, that brings up another issue that we found with the shadows. <laughs> notice the shadow being cast on the wall in this shot. That's our character shadow. But if you notice, we're actually crouching and then standing up, but the shadow itself on the wall doesn't change. Now, of course, you don't really need to model out a player character for this type of game when you're really not going to see them, but these sorts of things can break the realism when things like the shadow don't react to what your player is supposed to be doing. 
Or in this shot, you notice if you look all the way down, the player character casts a shadow, but there's no geometry there. So in the end, it creates this really strange effect. Now, it would have been a lot better if either the shadow wasn't there or we had some legs to maybe cast that actual shadow. There were a lot of great little details that we loved about the game. For example, how you can interact with a lot of things like the mice in this shot or even by burning the cobwebs in this cave. That actually brings up the lighter. As odd as it may sound, Metro Redux actually has the best lighter we've seen in a game. Notice in this shot how the flame flickers and dances around as you move it around. It's really well done. In the end, we're well aware that Metro Redux is essentially a rehashing of a couple games that are a couple years old. But with the remastering of the games, we really would have liked to have seen the devs push the overall experience of these two games a lot further to take advantage of the power of current generation consoles. So to tell a little story about this as we were reviewing it, there's only one disc with Metro Redux, but it contains two separate games. Now, when you launch the disc, you'll see this screen to let you choose which game you want to play. Once you start one of the games, there's no way to get to the other one. Now, we reviewed this game on an Xbox One, so maybe it's different on another console, but because the Xbox One by default has the ability to quick resume games, the only way we were able to switch between 2033 and Last Light and back and forth was to actually go into our Xbox One settings, turn off the quick resume, and then shut the entire Xbox off before powering it back on and launching the game again. All of that just to get back to this screen so we could launch the other game. Now I know the original games didn't have the ability to switch between games in their menus, so it would have had to have uh, made some alterations there. But because Metro Redux does let you switch games, and there's no way to switch between the games easily, the user experience really suffers as a result. Unfortunately, it seems like with the technical issues scattered around both the games, the end result is that Metro Redux doesn't really feel like it's been brought to the current generation of gaming. But instead, it feels more like, well, exactly what it is. Two last generation games just happen to be on one disc.